Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I, I usually say when I, uh, when I come to an affair like this, because it is true that I am very happy to be here. And at this stage of the game, I'm just happy to be anywhere. <laughs> uh, I, I, most of you know me and have been around and, and seen me and you've heard my stories before, you know. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of stories. Um, well, I should have a whole gang of stories. <laughs> You know, because uh, see, see, none of you know anything about what happened last century, so I can tell you any kind of story. But, I, but <laughs> because I, I just happen to be one of those things that came from last century, and uh, well, 1914, as a matter of fact. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who? <laughs> I can understand what you're saying. Woo, yeah. <laughs> that was a long time ago, boy. <laughs> in 1914, as I said, that was last century, you know, and what's, this is 2006. Uh, you know, coming up back in those days, I used to go out dancing, and I used to go dancing like all the time. Like I would go dancing, you know, like I'd go and practice in the daytime. I would be dancing in the daytime. And then I would go home, wash up, clean clothes, and change my clothes, and come back and dance at night. And I used to do this, well, this is when I wasn't working, <laughs> which was often. <laughs> but, uh, but I used to do this all the time. And I would do it almost like every day, because we had the opportunity of, of you've heard of the Savoy Ballroom, right? Does anybody here haven't heard of the Savoy Ballroom? You haven't heard of it? <laughs> Well, anyway, we had the opportunity, that is, why these Lindy Hoppers, you know, all the guys and why these Lindy Hoppers and all the, you know, guys. When I say guys, I'm speaking of everybody, ladies and girls, you know. So all the guys, we, we had the opportunity to go into the Savoy Ballroom in the daytime and, you know, practice. We, have, we, we used to have those little big trollers. <laughs> the, big troller, what is he talking about? Big, well, Vic Trollers back in our days was a record player, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, those are the kind of things you kind of wind it up, you know, and you put a record on it and, and then it, um, it runs out before the, <laughs> you know, the record is finished, you have to keep winding it and keep playing it. So we used to take our records and we would go up to some boy bar and play our records and we would dance, 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 you know, and then we'd say, hey man, what time is it? Oh, six o'clock. Oh, wow, I got to go home there. Go home, get something, eat, change clothes, come back up to some boy that night and do what we was trying to do in the daytime. So I used to do this so often, like, like every day I said, till I used to say, well, I, I think I was about 26, 27 years old, and I would say, man, I sure hope I live till I, uh, till I get 35. <laughs> yeah, really, I mean, I never thought, I never dreamed that I would live past 35. Because I just, I just danced. And I just thought I would just dance my life away, you know. <laughs> I didn't think I would die. I thought I would just dance my life away, you know. So uh, when I reached 35, I said, wow, I made it, Jim. I got to 35, you know. And then 36, oh, boy. <laughs> boy, I was floating there, Jim. And then the years started going on and, and on and on and on until now I just happen to be 92. So, so I just have to say, I'm, I'm happy to be here, y'all. <laughs> but you know, I always feel, and I mean, I've, I'm speaking of this sincerely, that you guys are the cause of me being here. Because uh, to me, you are like my, people always say, well, Frankie, what's your inspiration? And I say, you guys are my inspiration. When I see you out there on the floor dancing, you know, and then I see a smile pop on your face, you know, I say, oh, wow. Smile pop on your face, smile pops on my face, you know. And I see you out there dancing, and you be doing some step, 
and you say, I can't get that step, you know, and you be scuffling it around. And then all of a sudden, you got that step. And then a smile bursts on your face. And then you started being happy and everything, you know. And I look, I say, wow, that's great. So I get my inspiration from you guys. You are the one that keeps me alive. So I want to thank you guys. I, uh, all right. I had a mother who was very, uh, she was, uh, oh. now, you know, when you're growing up, you always have these little tiffs with your mother, you know. Uh, you know, like uh, she said, well, do so and so and so, you know. And you say, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I know you guys could do that in the later years. But I just want to tell you, I had, I had a mother. And she said, well, Frankie, do this. If I said, okay, mom, I'll do it a little later, I'd find myself getting up off the floor. Because <laughs> back in days, those days, they didn't take that, you know. If they tell you to do something, they meant for you to do it. And my grandmama, <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> I loved her, and she loved me, and I knew that. But man, if she tells me to do something, or if I did something wrong, she, out to the yard, get a switch, bring it back so I can whip you. Now, I got to go and get the switch for her to whip me. <laughs> but you know what was happening? I'm going to get the switch now, you know, and, and I was, eh, I'm crying all the way, Jim, because I know what's coming, boy. <laughs> Excuse the ugly face. But <laughs> I get over there, I get a switch, and I look at it, and I know she's, if this switch is small, I know she's going to send me back. So I get one that I know she, that she's, and I get this switch and I take it to the, uh, 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 and I give her the switch and I'm crying. And she said, well, since you're crying, I'm going to give you something to cry for. <laughs> and I have to lay across her lap. And she takes this and beats you, boy. She would be whipping me, Jim. And you know what? I, I, I discovered this after I had gotten so many beatings, you know, <laughs> that I should not talk to my grandmother when she's beat me. Like, I would say, she'd be hitting me, bam, I'd say, I ain't going to do it no more. She'd say, I know you ain't going to do it no more. You shouldn't have did it in the first place. You got to let talk about you. And after a while, I'd say, man, <laughs> I got a little wise. I wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> I would have let her just whip me, Jim, because the harder the more I talk, the more she whipped, you know, so... And then, you know, after she finished whipping me, you know, and she said, well, Frankie, you know, when you do something bad, you're going to get punished, punished for it. She said, okay. And she had me, I'll be sitting on the lap, you know, and I'll be crying, whimpering. And, and, see, I'm going to bake you a sweet potato pie. <laughs> and you know what? I forgot all about the whipping. Oh, yeah, my grandma, all right, sweet potato pie. Wow. And she goes, <laughs> she whipped me, and then she gave me something sweet, you know. That's for whipping me, you know. But uh, she was a wonderful lady. And uh, my mother, she, as I said, my, my mother not, never really beat me like that. Because uh, after my grandmother beat me, I just I say, I don't want my, my mama beating me too, you know. But when my mother says something, it, it's, it's one of these things where she would hit me, bam. But, but she'd do it like, you know, like on the spur of the moment, you know. She's a, I, I mean, she said, well, Frankie, I told you to do something. Bam! <laughs> and then I have to get up. <laughs> I don't get up near her, because if I did, she'd knock me down again. <laughs> but um, as I said, she was a wonderful lady, and, um, and I loved all of them. I loved my grandmother and my mother, and I know that they loved me. But that was the way the times was back in those days. You know, like, oh, if you, yeah, like, if you did something wrong, you're gonna get punished for it. So I know all through life, if I do something wrong, that I'm gonna be punished for it. So I try not to do anything wrong. But it doesn't always work. <laughs> uh -uh. I, uh, uh, actually, my mother was, uh, she was a wonderful dancer, you know. 
And uh, I, I talk a lot about her because uh, when, uh, when I came up to New York from Jacksonville, Florida, which is where I was born back in 1914, and I left Jacksonville, Florida, and I went up to New York in 1917. I was three years old. And um, it was just my mother and I. She, she left my father, and we took a boat up to, up to New York, and we, lived in New, we were living in New York. And my mother used to like to go to parties, you know, social dance parties. And they used to have these, uh, these kind of parties they call uh, uh, rent parties. Anybody ever heard of rent parties? You heard of them? Mm -hmm. But you don't know anything about them because, because you're too young for that. But, but anyway, rent parties are, are these things that uh, people would have when they own an apartment and they don't have enough money to pay for the rent. So they would give these rent parties and they would charge maybe about 25 cents to come into the rent party. Now you could go to these rent parties and you could get you know, food, dance, and 10 cents 10 cents more, we'll get you a mug about that big, a mug. And you take that mug and you go into the bathroom and you stick the mug in the tub and get yourself a jug of gin. <laughs> bathtub gin, that's what they call it. And that's where it was made, in the bathtub. <laughs> so you take this mug and you go in there and that would last you all night. Because if you had two of them, somebody would have to take you home. Those things were so strong, boy. That, there was one, one fellow, we used to know this guy. He used to make bathtub gin, and, uh, and he used to make it all the time, you know, and sell it and stuff like that, you know, but he used to drink it himself. So a bunch of us got together and say, man, let's, let's buy a bottle of, of real good whiskey for this guy. So we bought a, a bottle of whiskey for him. He took one drink of that and got sick. <laughs> he wasn't used to good whiskey. He just used that bathtub stuff that he used to get, you know. <laughs> so, so we you go to this these house rent parties, and then they have one of these uh, uh, boogie woogie piano players, and he'd be sitting out there just playing his music, and the people would be up on the floor just dancing, you know, doing the mess around, doing the Charleston and all that stuff like that. And uh, my mother used to take me to these, and I'd go in there for it, and she put me in this. They had a room set off to the side where they put hats and coats and things and all of that, and. Uh, my mother said, okay, Frankie, I'm going to put you in this room. If there's a bed, you can go to sleep. When I get ready to leave, I'll come in and get you, and we go home. So I said, okay, Mom. So she puts me in this room, closes the door, and she leaves. Soon as she leaves, closes the door, I go to the door, open it, peep through the head, crack, and I watch them sisters and brothers out there dancing. Man, they be dancing, doing the messing around, you know, and then they turn the lights way down low, and then they be doing the mooching, you know, like that. And I'll be, I'll be back in the, in the door looking. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I was doing it anyway. <laughs> and then they, they'd get out there, and then uh, they, they would start this circle. People start clapping the camera, and one, you know, one person or two people would get out on the floor, and they'd be doing a charge. And my mommy, she used to get out there, boy, and pull up a skateboard, and, and she would go to town, Jim. And she could get way down, you know, and get all dirty and everything. I mean. <laughs> Excuse me, not dirty. <laughs> and she would get all nasty, boy. She'd be doing a boogie, you know, boy. And man, you ain't seen the boogie till you seen my mama do a boogie. <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, boy. And then, I, and I'll be back. I'll be back at the door, and she'd be out there, you know, just, and I'll be back at the door, <laughs> just doing all that, trying to imitate what I see them do. Uh, when I uh, you know, got a little older, and I'd go to these parties with my mother. I would sit out, you know, like in the room where everybody else was dancing, you know, and um, and, and and sometimes, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I remember. I don't know if I should tell you all this. Uh. <laughs> it just it just my one time I was sitting. <laughs> I was sitting in a chair, you know, just watching the dancing and going on. And, and it was a, you know, like pretty lively tune. Then they finished the tune and they put the lights down low and they started playing one of these real low down grinding moves, you know, the slow blues and carrying on. We all call it blues night now. 
but you don't know what blues night is, Jim. <laughs> I'll just tell you that boy. And, and, and it was up there, you know, just dancing. And one of my mother's friends, this lady, she came over to me and uh, she said, come on, Frankie, let's dance, you know. And I was, she said, come on, come on. So I got up there and I was dancing with her and she was holding me real, real close, you know. And she was just carrying on, you know. <laughs> and she was dancing and she was moving, you know. And I was beginning, becoming to be embarrassed. <laughs> I, I, I told you I shouldn't tell you this. <laughs> That's when I knew I would become a man. <laughs> When the dance was over, man, I was like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but but that, was the, uh, that was like a way of life. Dancing was a way of life back in those days because it was, you know, it was cheap. And these people, they worked hard. It was not like uh, they had unions back in those days or anything like that. You had a job, you go on a job, and you could work. 10, 12 hours. You had to work until the boss tell you you can go home. And this is what happened to, you know, to my parents and all those people back in those days. They would, they finish on Friday nights and they got a weekend off. They want to go someplace and have some fun to forget about, you know, the hard work that they've been doing all week. So they would give parties, they would go to dances, because dancing was one of the cheapest things that they could do, you know, and have a complete, you know, be completely entertained at that particular time. So uh, that was just a way of life. Dancing was just a way of life. And, uh, and that was my way of life, right? Well, that's why I, I, I learned how to dance, you know, and, and, and all this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I had a lot, of, a, a lot of little setbacks, you know, like at the beginning when I was, uh, when I was starting to dance and all that. But, uh, but it's things that you uh, make you, you know, if you have a desire to do something, you want to say, okay, I did that wrong, but then I'm going to find out how to do it right. So, uh, uh, well, the first experience I had was that, uh, I was, uh, this young lady, her name was Julia, and uh, she was my girlfriend, and she and I used to go to parties when I was a young kid. We used to go to parties, and, and all of our friends, they considered us to be, you know, pretty good dancers, you know? So uh, they kept, they, they had started to have an uh, uh, Lindy Hop contest. It was at the Lafayette Theater uh, in New York, and uh, they were, the, the, the kids would say, well, Man, Frankie, you and Julia, why aren't you going to the contest? You know, but I, I didn't feel that I was good enough to go into any contest, you know. So I said, oh, man, I don't want to go. But they just kept urging me. He said, boy, you and Julia are good. You should try it. I mean, just go say, I said, we're going to be there. We're going to applaud for you, you know. So finally convinced me. So Julia and I, we went into this contest at the, at the Lafayette Theater. And we up there dancing. When it was our turn to dance, we swung out on the floor. We was dancing up. And then... Uh, the people started getting bored. And then after a while, people started booing, get them off the stage, boo, you know. And he was, was up there dancing, you know. I, was, I said, hey, Julie, we ain't doing so hot. She said, well, okay, we ain't doing so hot, but let's just finish dancing anyway. So we dancing, and they had a fellow in the wings with a long hook. <laughs> and he come dancing out on the stage, you know, being funny, dancing around us, all that. And then he takes the hook and put it around us and try to pull us off the stage. Now, I didn't want to be out there, but I didn't want to be pulled off stage either. So I couldn't make up my mind. But I was resisting him, you know, I was like, I don't want to finish dancing, you know. And he was pulling us and pulling us until he got us off the stage, you know. So after the show, I went to my friends. I said, man, I thought you guys were going to applaud to me. He said, man, you guys wasn't looking too good up there. <laughs> so everybody else was booing. We were afraid to applaud for you. <laughs> but... Um, Anyway, um, that was 
that was one thing, but it didn't stop me from, from wanting to dance. So I just, it just kept on until uh, uh, one other time, even before that, that particular time, I, uh, uh, and I was living on 138th Street, just down the block from the uh, Renaissance Theater, Renaissance Ballroom. There was a Renaissance Ballroom. Uh, I lived at one end of the block, Renaissance Ballroom at the other end of the block. And I would, uh, my mother belonged to this social club. And the social club was given a dance. And uh, she came to me this afternoon, that, that afternoon, and she said, hey, Frankie. I said, yeah, Mom. Want to go to dance with me tonight? Oh, dance with you tonight, Mom? Yeah, well, I want to go to dance with you tonight. She said, well, look, I'm, uh, my, my, my club is giving a dance, and we're going to have to decorate the ballroom, run it out of the ballroom up the street. And if you help me decorate the ballroom, I'll take you to dance tonight. So I said, oh, wow, that's what, you know how it is if your mother, your father say, well, I'm going to take you someplace, boy, and you had never been there before and you wanted to go. Say, yeah, I'm all go, boy. Right? We come downstairs, when I'm walking down the street. You know, some of my friends out there in the street playing, you know. So I'm walking down. I say, hey, man, I'm going to my mother, decorate the ballroom. Then I'm going to dance tonight. You know, these guys, yeah, get out of here. You ain't going nowhere. You're just talking. Going. I said, yeah, man, I'm going to dance with the big folks tonight. Ah, go ahead, man. So we go up there, we decorate the ballroom, putting up lanterns and corn stalks and pumpkins because, yeah, it was Halloween time, you know. So we put up this stuff, everything, finish. She said, Frank, we finish, we can go home and get dressed. And I said, I said, okay, mom. We walk down the street, come and go upstairs, I go upstairs, you know, put, jump in the tub, take a bath, get all dressed, put on my hat and my coat. And I had nickels, you know, come up here like me. Nickels come right along later. You know? Nickels up today. And then I had on this little jacket, you know, with a belt around it. And I had a little bow tie, <laughs> cap on my head. Then I walked, hey, Mom, I'm ready. She said, Frankie, the dance is at 9 o'clock, and it's only 7 o'clock now. <laughs> Have you ever had to wait? <laughs> when you're anxious to go somewhere, you know. I mean, just take, for instance, you standing on a corner, and the weather is about 10 degrees, and you waiting for a bus. And somebody tells you the bus is be long in five minutes. Now, ordinarily, five minutes don't mean nothing, right? But you stand out there in the cold for five minutes. <laughs> you just, it seems like a long time. So here I am, all dressed up, and I'm going I'm to have to wait two hours for my mama to get ready. So I'm sitting there, man, and just twiddling my thumb and twiddling my Hey, Mom, is time yet? She says, no. Mom, you know, every five minutes, because five minutes was a long time, I kept saying, she said, well, I'll tell you when. Now you just sit down and stay there. So, man, I sat there. So every few minutes, Mom would say, okay, Frankie, I'm ready to go. So I said, yeah, okay, Mom. Jump up, wait, walking down the street. And them same guys that I, that I talked to me before, they out there on the street playing, you know. So I'm walking up. I, and they look at me. Hey, Frankie, you dressed up. Where are you going? I told you I was going to the ballroom with the night dance with the big folks. You didn't believe me, did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be dancing, Jim. You guys going to be out. <laughs> so I'm going up the ballroom with my mother. And there was a Renaissance ballroom. They had a floor down there. Then they had a balcony upstairs. And so she sent me upstairs in the balcony. I was sitting upstairs in the box, you know, looking at all the big folks down there dancing. You know, I'm just bouncing around. And so so then my mama, she comes up and get me. She said, Frankie, you want to dance? Oh, yeah, mama. Walk down on the floor, get out there, and the music starts playing, and I'm dancing my mother. Now, you know, the only dance I know how to do is what I used to see them do <laughs> at the house rent parties, you know. So I'm up there. <laughs> but I was dancing with my mama, man. <laughs> I didn't care what I was doing, boy. I was dancing with my mama. I was just going, okay. And I'm, so when the dance is over, we started walking off the floor. And I felt so proud because I just finished dancing with my mama. And I'm walking off like this, you know, <laughs> looking around. So my mama said, Frankie? I said, yeah, mom. She said, you'll never be a dancer. <laughs> I said, why you say that, mom? She said, because you're too stiff. OK. So that, you know, that dance was spoiled for me that night. But what I did, I went home and I, I, I took my record player, I bought some records, and I started playing records, and I'd get in my room, and I'd take a broom or a chair, and I'd dance with this broom or chair, you know, and I'd be, you know, trying to, trying to, 
trying to get down, you know. So, and I'll be making all this noise. My mom would say, hey, Frankie, what you doing? I said, trying to get unstiff, Mom. That was my word, unstiff. But I just want to tell you, um, that was like in 1927. I was 13 years old. So uh, 1937, about 10 years later, I'm appearing at the Cotton Club with Cab Calloway, Bill Bojangles Robinson, you know, the, the biggest stars, you know, in, in the entertainment world. And I invite my mother and her friends down to see the show. So they come down to see the show and they're sitting out there in the audience. When the show is over, I come out to the table and I sit with them, I'm talking, how'd y'all like the show? So they say, oh, the show was beautiful. And my mom say, oh yeah, the show was, and you were wonderful, Frankie. I say, yeah, mom, do you still think I'm too stiff? <laughs> She looked at me and said, what are you talking about? I say, you remember 10 years ago? <laughs> she says, uh, I didn't tell you that. I said, oh, yes, you did. You told me that. <laughs> well, <laughs> OK, well, where's uh, Manu? I'm back here. Oh, you're back there? Yeah, can we get the lights up a little bit? Can we get a mic? Lights up, please. You got any questions for Frankie? Whoa, that was quick. Right here. <laughs> was that filmed in a studio? What state was it filmed in? Was, it, was Hell's Pop filmed in a studio, and what state was it in? Uh, it was filmed in the state of California, and yes, it was uh, filmed at the Universal Studios in Culver City, Kansas City. Up Kansas City. Here I come. <laughs> uh, at California. <laughs> yes, it was filmed there. But what actually happened is that we had this contract to do this movie. Uh, we were in New York. So what I did, I choreographed the routine while in New York. So when we came out to California, uh, I had this experience because I had been out of California and made a couple of movies before that. And each time that we made movies before, we would come out to California and we didn't have a routine set. So, I had to get out to California and then make up a routine. So I said, well, this time I'll make up the routine and take it out there. And they said, well, you got a routine. I said, yeah, this is it. So when we got to California, Nick Castle, who was the musical director for that particular studio, he came on the set. He said, well, uh, uh, you guys got a routine? Well, Nick Castle was a wonderful tap dancer. How many of you guys have ever seen any of the Nicholas Brothers? Well. Nick Castle was a choreographer for the, for the Nicholas Brothers, but he was not a Lindy Hopper, so he didn't know, you know what, what to do with Lindy Hopper. But I already had the routine, so when I did the routine and showed him, we showed him the routine, he said, oh yeah, that's good, keep that in. <laughs> so that was his choreography. People at the Savoy Ballroom and they were playing a swing and tune. How many of those people actually knew how to do Lindy Hop and swing out and stuff? Okay, I was 3,000 there, yeah. about 2,999. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, it was quite a few people who knew how to do the Lindy Hop and knew how to do the swing outs there. Uh, I wouldn't say that everybody did because. Uh, we, uh, some people would be doing the Lindy Hop, some might be doing a Foxtrot, you know, the, the, just, just the dances that they could do. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, a lot of people came there to see, just to watch, and, and some came there to watch and learn. So because that was the way that we learned how to dance in those days, is by looking at other people dance and trying to do what we saw them do. So, but, but a lot of times it was, uh, you know, I think probably the majority of people were doing the Lindy Hop at that time. I don't say they were performers, but they were social dancers that were doing the Lindy Hop at that time. But uh, uh, because the music was always, you know, like, <laughs> like swinging, man, you know. <laughs> when you first come into the Savoy Ballroom, you start walking up the steps, man, and you hear that music, Jim. Before you, before you get to the top of the stairs, you're dancing already. So yeah, most of them that came up there knew how to do at least a swing out. Uh, uh, most of the guys, and, and I'm gonna tell you, 
uh, sometimes you go to dances now and there's, there's not many guys there, a lot of women. A lot of times you go to some boy, there was a lot of guys and little women. <laughs> you know, because the guys went up there to, to try to get a dance with the ladies, you know. So, so uh, it was a lot of Lindy hopping going on. And that was the new dance. So everybody wanted to learn how to do that. As a matter of fact, uh, Lana Turner was credited with naming the Savoy the home of happy feet. <laughs> yep. You got any over here? Yep. Oh. Uh, I, did that answer your question? Yeah, I guess it did. <laughs> I don't know everything he said. But. He said, uh, how often did you guys practice? Did you have jobs outside of the Savoy? Um, and what was the other thing? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, what, was it? Life, what was life like? What was life like? What did you have to do? Yeah, how much did you practice? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, actually, uh, I was working uh, personally. I'm speaking of myself now. I was working uh, as a furrier. And uh, I was going to Savoy at night to dance. Uh, but a furry was like a, a, a Every night? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a furry was, was, was like a part-time job almost, or a seasonal job, I should say it like that. I think that's the word. Because uh, we would make furs in the summertime for the ladies to wear in the wintertime. So I had a job, you know, like in the summer. And when I wasn't working, I mean, when I finished my job, I would go to the Savoy. But when I wasn't working, I had the opportunity, I think I mentioned this, I had the opportunity to go to the Savoy, you know, like during the day. And yes, I went to the Savoy, well, not every day, just seven days a week. Because <laughs> that, uh, that was my way of life. I mean, I, I, I lived at home, you know, with my parents. So I wasn't worried about, you know, about eating, because that's all I needed to do, eat and sleep and go to Savoy. <laughs> so uh, uh, what was that last question? What was that last question you said? How much did you practice? Oh, um, not, uh, well, we didn't practice very much, you know. Well, we would go there about 2 o'clock, and we practiced till about 6, well, about 4 hours, that's long. <laughs> and then we would come down there, we would come back at the nighttime, and we'd just practice some more. Or we practiced what we were trying to do that day. We were trying to do it at night at the Savoy. And then if we mess up a step, we'd come back the next day. And we'd oh, stay maybe four hours. You know, so we didn't practice very much. <laughs> Just every day. <laughs> including Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't tell you that, because I didn't go to church on Sundays. Church, that was my uh, pulpit, Savoy Ballroom. I go to Savoy Ballroom and you had a preacher up there. And I'm, when I mean a preacher, Chick Webb and Ella Fitzgerald on the bandstand. <laughs> Those were my preachers, man. <laughs> so I, I actually, when I wasn't working, man, I was in the Savoy. I'd say maybe, how many hours in a day? <laughs> Half of the time I was in the Savoy. And most of the other dancers uh, was the same way. It was just a big group of us, white as Lindy Hoppers. We would just be in the Savoy day, practice, night, dancing. And that was seven days a week. And I, I mean, I, I feel kind of sorry for you guys at this age. I mean, you, you, you don't have the opportunity that we had, you know, because I say we go to dancing every night. We, we did. We went dancing every night, you know, like I leave the dance one night. I say, hey, man, see you tomorrow night. I say, OK, tomorrow night, we right back in the dance again. And we had this wonderful music uh, that played. We had, at the Savoy Ballroom, they had like two bands, two big bands, like Chick Webb on one bandstand at one time, Teddy Hill on the next bandstand at one time. And at other times, we had like a, the Battle of the Bands with Chick Webb on one bandstand and Benny Goodman on the other bandstand. So we just, we just danced, man. I think I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, I danced so much that I didn't think I would live to be 35. <laughs> we danced and we practiced. It, it wasn't like a, uh, we said, well, okay, man, we're going to have a class. There were no classes. Not 
as we do now. You know, you have, uh, that's the best part about, you know, the life that you live now and, uh, and the life that we live. You have some wonderful uh, instructors who can get you out on the floor and say, well, look, this is the way you do the step and this is the way you should look when you're doing the step and all that. When we danced, we didn't have mirrors or anything like that. And we didn't know how we looked. We just were out there dancing. If somebody say, hey, Frankie, you look good. I say, yeah, thanks, man, you know. Because yeah. other people look at you and see how you dance or see how you look. So I, I, I really didn't know how to dance. I didn't think I was such a good dancer. But I was, uh, I was enjoying myself, I'll tell you the truth. And other people would say, hey, Frankie, you look like you're flying. I said, yeah, man, that's how I want to look like I'm flying. You know? <laughs> So yeah, we, we danced day and night. And if you want to call it practice, that's what we did. We practiced. Does that answer your question? Satisfactory? If it's not satisfactory, let me know. Because <laughs> I don't have any other answer for you. <laughs> Do we have time for one more? Okay. We have five minutes. Yeah. Right up here. Oh, I thought we had one down there. What's your question, girl? <laughs> Listen to what he said, because I, I can't hardly hear him. Okay, speak to him. People spend a lot of time uh, working on their swing out and the technique and breaking it down, lots of different ways. If you have any memories of how you learned the swing out and how, how you broke it down or what you focused on, just how you learned the swing out? Well, uh, I, don't, I, I really don't <laughs> have memories I, uh, of, of uh, what I did. I just do remember that, you know, I, I mentioned that Shorty Snowden was my idol, and there was another one, uh, uh, Leroy Stretch Jones. Now, these guys were the tops and Lindy Hopping at the Savoy Ballroom. I wanted to dance like Shorty Snowden. I wanted to dance like Leroy Stretch Jones. And at times, I would be out on the floor dancing, and Somebody would say, hey, Frankie, you look just like Shorty Snowden. I say, oh, wow, man. You know, if somebody tells you you look like somebody who's a great dancer, that makes you feel good, right? It makes you feel like, OK, I must be doing pretty good if I look like that guy, you know? So when they say you look like Shorty Snowden, man, I felt, all right, man, I must be doing pretty good if I look like Shorty Snowden. And then I'll be out there because I could do everything that Shorty Snowden was doing because I watched him so much. And I watch uh, Leroy Stretch Jones. Well, Leroy was, uh, was one of these very, well, he did a lot of footwork, you know? So I would watch his feet to see what he was doing, and I would use what he was doing with his feet with the way that Shorty Snowden would move his body. And then I was just dancing, they said, boy, you look like Leroy. I say, wow, that's great. You look like Shorty, oh, that's great, you know? And then after a while, the, because these guys were from the old school, and they were dancing upright ballroom. If you noticed in the movies, all of them was, was up in here. You know, they were dancing up in here. Well, after a while, I started getting down in here. And I started getting down in here. And I would be swinging out in time with the music. And the music is what kind of maybe fashioned my style of dancing. Because the music was swinging, and I wanted to be swinging. So that's what I would do. I would stretch out, you know, like, I said, wow, the music is saying, jump. And I said, yeah, I want to do that. They jump, you know, and I would be going like that. And then somebody said, hey, Frankie, you look like you're flying. I said, yeah. That's the look I wanted to have. So nobody actually taught it to me. It's just the way that I felt like I wanted to dance. And there was no way of saying, uh, at that time, I didn't know anything about breaking it down, you know, like uh, uh, somebody come to me and say, well, Frankie, how do you do this step? If you're in this position, how would you, how would you do a Charleston? I say, I do a Charleston right down there. <laughs> you know, where I am, I do a Charleston from there. But I didn't know how to say, well, look, you want to get down and you want to do this. I didn't know all of that. So, and as I tried to mention earlier, it wasn't that we had people who could break the steps down for you. If somebody did a step and you liked it, you would either go over to them and ask them and say, hey man, how you do that step? 
And he wouldn't know how to break it down, but he would do the step, whichever step it was, he would do it. And I just tell you, I was pretty good at that, at that time. I ain't so good now. But then I was pretty good. You know, I see, if a guy did a step two times, goodbye, I got it and gone. <laughs> yeah. So I would watch other people and watch what they're doing. And if I like what they're doing, I would try to do what they do. And that was the same thing for any, uh, any of the other dancers. If they saw you doing a step and they came over to you and asked you, half the time when you went over to a guy and said, hey man, you just did a step, that's great, can you do it? Half the time you don't remember what step it was. So, he, so you say, okay, just keep dancing. And he danced, and then he do I just said, that step right there, that one you just did. You know? <laughs> so he said, oh, that, yeah, man, I did it like this, you know. But he wouldn't know how to actually break it down. And uh, it was the same thing with me. Somebody asked me how to, you know, how to do a step. I didn't actually know how to break it down. When I first started teaching in studios, I used to say I wasn't a teacher, I'd show you. I would do something, I said, well, try to do what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so that was the only way I know, I mean, that's the same way I am now, I mean. I, if I break a step down, boy, it's by luck. <laughs> does that answer your question? I mean, if it doesn't, you know, like I told that other guy, if it don't, don't ask me no more. All right, looks like we're out of time. No, one young lady over there, she had a question. I was ask, when you started teaching? When you started teaching? When did I start teaching? Well, actually, uh, I, I like to say, and I, and I kind of feel that it's true, I started teaching when uh, Aaron Stephen and, uh, and Stephen Mitchell came to me uh, around eight, 1986, 87, and uh, <laughs> they had actually been uh, uh, practicing with uh, Al Mims, and Al Mims passed away. So then they was looking for uh, any dancer from, from that era, and I just, I just happened to be around. <laughs> and and they, they, they looked it up. Uh, somebody told them, so, well, well, why don't you call Frank Manning? So they, uh, I understand that, uh, that Aaron and Steve, they looked in the telephone book, and they saw my name in there, and they, they started calling the Frankie Mannings. And, and then they called me up and said, well, uh, are you Frankie Manning the dancer? At the time, I was working in the post office. I said, no, I'm Frankie Manning the postal worker. <laughs> so they said, well, do you dance? I said, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, well, uh, uh, we heard that you used to be with Whitey's Lenny. I said, yeah. So they said, well, uh, would you teach us? So I said, well, listen, I don't, uh, well, as I, I mentioned to you, I was not a teacher. I didn't, I, I said, well, uh, you know, I don't do that. I don't dance anymore. But they were kind of insistent. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll, uh, the, the Cat Club, you know, there was a club in, in New York, and a bunch of dancers came up there, and I, and I, I saw them dance, and I, I said, well, they, they had potential, you know, and it was the same opportunity that Herbert White gave me when he saw me dancing in the Savoy, and he said, do you want to join the Lindy Hoppers? He kind of felt that I had potential, so when I saw them, them dancing, I said, wow, these, these kids are pretty good. Maybe I can help them. So. Uh, so we went into the studio, and I was trying to show uh, Stephen and Aaron, you know, a few things and all that. And that help you in it? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I want to do that. Does that answer your question? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, big round of applause. Mr. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for giving me this life. Yes, thank you. Thank you.